Hi everyone, I'm Wally Nichols. I'll be your host this evening for the Asset Guidance Group webinar on the five myths of home loans. Let's get right into it. First, let's check out everyone's barometer. Gut reactions here, true or false? A large down payment will save you money over time more than a small down payment will. A 15 year mortgage will save more money over time than a 30 year mortgage. Making extra principal payments to save you money and the interest rates, the main factor in determining the cost of a mortgage. And finally, you're more secure having your house paid off than finance 100%. We're talking financially secure here. You're more financially secure having your house paid off than having it financed 100%. Okay, let's work with these, these truths that everyone knows and, uh, and, and, and hold them under scrutiny. And let's see, let's see how, they, how, how it all pans out. Now, when you get into the buying a house, financing a house, how to do it, it's confusing because there's a lot of moving parts there and there's a lot of things to consider and it's probably the largest financial uh, decision you make in a lifetime. And so uh, you, have, you have to be cognizant of all, of all the, the various um, factors that are involved in this because they can work for you or against you, such as the loan term, the rate options, the payment timings, length of the term, how you're going to charge interest, uh, how you're going to pay it, are you going to pay it all, you're going to, you're, you're going to just pay a little bit interest only, you're going to pay a big big sum at the end, call a balloon payment, etc. So you follow me on that. Now, so we're thinking about those questions. Let me ask you the question, is everything that you think, feel, or have been told true? Does it really hold up under mathematical scrutiny? So let's look at all of these, all of these different uh, decisions we have to make because it's the biggest expense of a lifetime, as I said. Do you finance for 15 years and save interest? Do it for 30, make extra payments? Do you pay it early, save interest? Do you focus on the interest rates uh, because they're the most important factor? What is the most important factor in, de in, in determining the cost of a loan? And then the big one is, are you financially more secure owning your house, paying it off as fast as you can, then leaving it financed. And what I want to put to you is that perhaps you're being informed, particularly on that last point, more by emotion in the form of the Maslowian hierarchies of, of needs. Because what what are we really yearning to do? What are we truly yearning when we're saying, I need to have that house paid off? We don't want that pit of the stomach feeling, that anxiety that comes with the, with, that, that comes with the need to go find money to pay for something that you have to have, a basic necessity of life. And so because the house is the largest personal investment you make, you're going to need to decide how to pay for it because if you do it incorrectly, you can, you can create unnecessary wealth transfers. Now, what am I talking about here? Well, you know me, I'm always coming up with three classifications for money, all right? Three buckets there. I'm gonna slice this pie three ways this time in this fashion. Let's say that you have money coming in. Think of cash flows, you got coming in and going out. So the money that you have coming in, you're first going to pay your necessities and that's going to be the transfers out. And then the rest of your money is that you have is going to be consumed for lifestyle and, and the meaning remaining portions are going to be used for savings. So that's your accumulated money. So money comes in, we pay the necessary bills, those that's the transfers out, and then we maintain our lifestyle as is required, and the extra then goes into accumulations or, or the money that we put in there in the form of contributions, plus what it's growing and reinvesting on its own, okay? Now, we're talking about wealth transfers here. So these types of transfers are going to occur regardless of whether you finance your home, have, have a mortgage, or if you pay for it 100% in cash. Because if you're financing the home, then you're taking the bank's principal, 
you're putting it using other people's money to go into that real estate and you're paying them rent on that money. You're paying them interest in the form of interest, okay? Paying that back and in a portion of the principal with every payment if we're amortizing it. Now, if you've got a negative amortization loan and you just got that balloon staring you in your face down, down the road, better have a fund ready for that one, right? Okay, on the other hand, if you pay cash for your house, that means you're self-financing it. You don't have to pay the interest, so you're saving that expense, but you are giving up the opportunity cost of investing that same money elsewhere and earning more than what you would have uh, in, 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 the, in the real estate, okay? So understanding where, when, and how about these wealth transfers is going to help prevent unnecessary losses. It's going to enable you to optimize your cash flow. Ultimately, that translates into portfolio size and at the end of the day, gonna give you the type of retirement that you deserve. Okay, so let's go back to those four or five uh, truths that we started off with. If those are all true, then why even have a mortgage at all? Well. Most people don't have the luxury of being able to pay for a, a house outright, okay? So you don't have enough money to pay cash for the house. Also, when you get the mortgage and you pay interest on that, you get to have tax deductions for the interest paid. And then last, you have the potential to make a profit on the spread. Now, not many people uh, think about this one, but you do have the potential to make a profit on the spread, the difference between what it costs to borrow and what you can otherwise earn on that money. And that's what the people that you see on TV that flip houses, that's their gambit. They're, they're, they're gaming that they can borrow money and, and by the time they get finished with those houses, they're going to earn more on, on the upsell then it costs to borrow and they profit on the spread on the difference there. So let's transition a little bit and look at one of the hidden costs that is a major factor that you need to be taking in consideration when you're discussing financing the loan. So let's say that your house payment is $2,000 a month. If the inflation rate, and currently it's 2.27% based upon the best data that I've found, and that's what we routinely price in right now this year uh, as we move into post-pandemic economy. And we, we, the Fed's been searching for inflation. Well, they finally found it. I think it's coming. Now, I don't think it's going to be out of control. 2.27 is, is probably a minimal amount. But 2.27% rate of inflation just nine years into the future means that the value of that $2,000 today, whatever it will buy today, it will only buy $1,600 and change worth of those same goods in the future nine years. So you're borrowing, you're paying back money today that has a, a higher purchasing value. Nine years into the future, you're gonna be paying back that same loan with cheaper dollars, dollars that are worth less to the lender. So that is an advantage for you if we stretch this out and project 30 years into the future at the same 2.27% inflation rate, now you, the value of the dollars that you're paying that, that mortgage payment in today's value are 50%. They have the buying power of only 50% of the dollars that you have today. So you, your $2,000 payment today, really 30 years into the future, you're only paying them back $1,000. Think about it they're getting less purchasing power back at that time. Then let's shift into the discussion about opportunity cost. Well, what is opportunity cost? If you're earning interest on your down payment, is the down payment money accessible? So what you put down into the house, the equity that you've got in the house, can you access that cash or do you have to do some gymnastics to get a hold of it? So, Think about the money that's invested in the real estate. What would that money be worth today if you'd invested it in an alternative investment instead? And if there's, if, the, if you would have earned more on an alternative investment, then the difference between what you've earned in the house versus the alternative investment is the opportunity cost 
that you've got tied up. That's what that's an expense that it's costing you in your real estate just as much as the property taxes for the privilege of allowing the state allowing you to keep the real estate, etc. The repairs, all of these things that are that are all the luxuries of home ownership, okay, or owning real estate generally. So your payment includes not only interest, but also principal. Okay, we're paying, we're amortizing these loans slowly over time. We're paying back the, the bank its principal, the lender. Okay, we're giving away the opportunity to invest all of that money and benefit from its future growth. The lender, because its loan is secured by your real estate, is watching its equity grow just like you are. Now, let me make some disclosures here, okay? I'm gonna show you some hypothetical illustrations that I've simplified them for elegant purposes and, uh, and, and in order to uh, make it easier to compare in the short amount of time we have, you know, apples to apples here. Two different types of investments, two different types of loans. So these are all straight lines. They assume constant uh, rates, okay? Averaging constant rates, so they're linear over time. Straight line. There's no transaction costs or fees involved in all of this, et cetera. I will give you a couple of after-tax and tax-free uh, illustrations here. But anyway, they're not, I'm not re representing any particular investment. And as always, past performance is no guarantee of future results. Now, let's get back into the opportunity costs about your down payment. Okay, let's say you have $20,000 down in your house. You could get you could get an investment rate of return of 6% on that. So growing the 20,000, had you in, grow, put it in a fund or, or some type of investment that grows at 6% a year for 30 years. So just average 6% over 30 years, the value of those future dollars, that 20,000 would have grown into just shy of $115,000. Now, if you bought your house outright, let's say it was $400,000 you could have taken that money and gotten the same 6% on that over the entire 30 years. That turns into 2.3 million, just shy of $2.3 million. So that's the opportunity cost that you would have by if your house was, if you paid cash for the house, if it's not worth 2.3 million at 6%, then the difference between what it is worth and the 2.3 is the opportunity cost uh, of owning that real estate, plus all the other expenses that were involved in it. Now, if you could have taken that 400 and got a nominal 12%, I, I, we, we can average, if, you, if you're the right type of investor, we can average you 12% fairly consistently. If we could do that over 30 years at 12%, your house is worth almost, uh, not, not the house, but the down payment money, the, the money that you bought the house with, paid cash for it, 400,000 would be worth about $12 million in 30 years. So is the house really a good store of, of value? Let's let's look at it closer. Uh, uh, let's say your house is worth four hundred thousand. You originally bought it at two eighty nine. You've paid ten years worth of taxes on it at twenty five thousand. Let's just say uh, twenty five hundred a year for ten years. Let's just say for the sake of uh, elegance and simplicity in modeling that that's twenty five thousand. So your gain over the period is eighty six thousand dollars the over 10 years, okay? The equivalent compound annual growth rate then is 2.45%. Now, remember when we were talking about inflation just a couple of minutes ago at 2.27%, if we've got an equivalent compound annual growth rate here, or CAGR, of 2.45, we're barely keeping up with inflation for tying up that 400 into this real estate that we still get to get pay $2,500 a year for as we move along. Now, what if you had to make significant capital repairs to the house? Let's say that in addition to the $25,000 that you've paid in taxes, you had to make $75,000 worth of repair. So you've got $100,000 
uh, along with your 289, now your gain over the same 10 years has been sliced down to $11,000. And your equivalent compound annual growth rate then is 0.28% is what you've earned on that $400,000 investment. Now we're getting chewed up by inflation. Inflation's eating us up at the rate of 2% per year plus the op other opportunity costs that we could have had by investing elsewhere. So let's look at the, at, at, at the way that we can finance this through a mortgage loan. Okay, a mortgage loan, let's say it's 2.87% for $289,000 loan. Now, let's say that it's a 30-year term, okay? So then our monthly payment at 2.87% for 30 years on $289,000 with a principal loan is $1,195 a month. Now, over that 30 years, the amortization works like this. You will have paid $141,000 in change in interest. Remember, that, remember the wealth transfer pie that we talked about. So the money comes in, you then over that 30 year period have transferred out $141,347 in interest. Just poof, gone. The future value of that $1,195, so the interest in the principal, if you had invested that just at the same loan rate, just at 2.87%, that would have turned into just shy of $683,000. 683 to the good versus 141 and change to the bad. That's a lot of money. That's We're talking about a spread here of around $800,000. Now, let's look at the lump sum then invested. If you could have invested the mortgage payments, the $1,195, at an, at an investment rate of return of 6%, that's nominal, it's that, that, that's kind of like an average, we should be able to, 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 to hit a 6% rate of return on the average without expending a lot of energy and exposing uh, a, to a lot of extra risk. And as, as it is, there are ways to do this with very low risk levels, okay, approaching zero. And if you did that, you would have 1.2 million in change as opposed to what you would have had just having the house paid off, paying off the $289,000. The opportunity cost of this lump sum is a, a million, almost 659,000, a million 659, almost 660,000, $1.66 million as opposed to with, with the with the principal and interest as opposed to just putting in eleven hundred and ninety five dollars a month okay the lump sum would have turned into 1.66 million just putting in the eleven hundred ninety five dollars a month at six percent would have turned into 1.2 million and change say it a third time if you took the lump sum that you had paid out and just and, and earned six percent on that you would have had just shy of 1.7 million, just making the payments into a fund and earning 6% on those over 30 years would have turned into one, a little over 1.2 million. Let's look at it graphically. Now you read this chart in this fashion, the blue bars, okay, in front, in, row, in the front row, go from left to right here. Those are the, the uh, amounts that you're paying in interest payments over the term and what they would have grown to at the mortgage rate of return, okay? The middle one is if you would have had that principal balance and just invested at the mortgage rate of return, okay? Uh, and, and then the down payment is what you're paying uh, I'm sorry, the mortgage rate of return is the green boxes, and that's the middle row there. The blue boxes is the expenses that you have at in the, in the loan itself. The green boxes then are is if you had invested those um, same amounts of money 
at the mortgage rate of return of what you're paying out was coming in. And then the back line or gold boxes are all at an investment rate of return of 6%, a nominal investment rate of return of 6%. So you can see the difference in these, in these wealth transfers that are, that are occurring here and the difference in height of each of those boxes or bars, however you want to look at them, is the opportunity cost. Now, let's talk about the term of loan. Reasons people you choose a, a shorter term mortgage rather than a longer term mortgage is because they think they're going to save money over time because the perception is that the shorter loan duration is going to reduce the amount of interest that you have to pay out. If you follow that logic, then the best alternative is, is really, if this is all true, you, you're better off paying cash for the house, right? And yet I just showed you on the bar chart what your alternative could have been had you paid that lump sum into an alternative investment. So that's the reason, number one, and I hear this day in, day out, as though it were just the gospel truth that it's a no-brainer that you always go for the 15, not the 30, in order to save interest. Because once you pay off your house, then you'll really be able to save. And aren't we really, remember that, remember that, uh, emotional response that I was talking about earlier, aren't we really trying to satisfy that yearning? What we're really yearning for is the, is the feeling of financial security, but we need to be beyond the feeling. It needs to be a real financial security. Let's test the 15 year versus the 30 year over time. All right, let's use a 30 year time horizon for the entire analysis, okay? And what we're going to do is this, 30-year time horizon is, is the comparative period. Now, on the one hand, you've got a 15-year mortgage, and you're going to make payments for that 15-year mortgage. And those payments are going to be $1,973 on the same $289,000 loan. The interest on the loan is going to be 2.87%. So I, don't want, I want to hold some things constant here because if you have too many variables moving, it, it becomes confusing. So the only thing that we're going, to, we're going to alter here is the term of the loan in order to isolate the difference between 15 and 30 years. So you're going to pay $1,973 if you go the 15-year route. And then since we're working on a 30-year time horizon for comparative purposes, we're going to say then once you've paid the mortgage off at year 15, you're going to make another 15 years worth of payments at $1,973 a month. Invest that at 6% in an alternative investment. Okay, that's going to turn into 500 and just shy of $77,000. That's going to turn into $577 thousand dollars five six five seventy six six sixty seven now 30 year time horizon let's look at this way instead of doing the 15 year loan what if you had done the 30 year now you're going to pay at 2.87 percent on the 289 for 30 years you're going to pay eleven hundred ninety five dollars a month for the house for the loan to extinct amortize the loan over 30 years the difference in the two payments is $778. So now instead of waiting 15 years to start the side fund and fund it at 6%, what we're going to do now is starting day one and we're going to invest that $778 in a side fund while we're making the 1195. Because if we could have done the 1973, let's do the 1973 only we're giving $1,195 to the lender for the privilege of using their loan and, and, and borrowing their money. And we're putting this difference, the spread, the $778, into our own side fund and growing it at 6% annually. That, over the 30 years, now we get to that 30 years, that's $785,051. So if we do it in this fashion, you can see that the green box is taller than the blue box. The green box is the 30 year. So I put to you, we are saving more money by going the 30 year route and being smart about it and investing the difference. 
Now, let's shift and look at a little bit of after tax rate of return. So if we can do this, now we know this, that the 30 years actually works out better for us than the 15, what after tax rate of return must we have in that side uh, fund in order to pay off the 30 year mortgage in year 15? Let's assume that you're like most people, you're in the 24% federal tax bracket. I'm going to kick out state and, 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 and taxes and all that stuff uh, for simplicity's purposes. So let's just look at the 24% tax bracket and say that is the composite, okay, all around. Now, in order to get that same side fund, because in 15 years, we are going to have amortized the $289,000 loan. We need to pay off $174,679 in year 15. So that's how much the side fund has to grow to by year 15. And now we've had our cake and eat it too, I would argue, because we've, uh, we've, we've got our investment and we and we got the uh, the lower monthly payment, and we're still paying the house off in, in 15 years. Okay, uh, if that's what you wanted to do, I would urge that you just go ahead and keep servicing the loan, and and watch this other money keep growing. Then you have options. You have options. And what have you satisfied that yearning to get rid of that pit of the stomach feeling, that anxiety of where would I go look for money? If push came to shove and I had to extinguish this mortgage, you know where it is. You know where it is, okay? So it takes 6.13% at an after-tax rate because you're gonna be paying taxes every year on, 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 on the growth of that money, right? And that's gonna be short-term capital gains every year as that money grows. So you're gonna be paying it as ordinary income at the 24% tax bracket rate. Now, if we back into it, if we take the taxes out of it, if we could find a tax-free alternative investment and we didn't have to pay taxes on the growth, then we only need to earn 2.83% year over year. So, if we do that, then if we earn the 2.83, 2.84%, then look at the size that the green box Out, 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 it has to perform compared relative to the blue box, which is tax free. So it makes a tremendous amount of difference in, to find these tax free alternatives and accomplish the same mission because it's a whole lot easier to average 2.84% over 15 years than it is six. It's not a lot of extra work to average the six. It should come hand in hand if you've got a good advisor and a good money manager, but it's still twice the burden that the other would be. All right, let's assume a tax-free rate of return. What if your tax-free actually did earn the 6%? So if then looking at it from that way, if we're earning the 6%, we only had to earn 284 to make it, but what if we earn 6%? How much earlier can we have enough money in there to extinguish the 30-year mortgage in year 15 or before? Well, the 778 growing at 6% tax-free reaches that side fund balance of 174, 679, sufficient to pay off the balance of the mortgage in year 15. We reach that amount at year 12, about middle of, between years 12 and 13. So we're actually about 151 months. We've got enough in the side fund. If we choose to do so, we can totally extinguish the mortgage. We can keep growing that for another two and a half years and just look, and then we can still pay off the, the mortgage, but look at the extra money that we would still have in that tax-free side fund in case of an emergency or anything else that life handed us as, as, as things went along. And that will continue to grow such that if you follow the logic, just because you could do it in year 12 and a half, should you? And if that side fund keep, continues to grow at a tax-free rate of 
as you as you continue to service that mortgage by year 20, you've got such a tremendous amount of options available to you. Whatever left hand uh, you know punch that life gives you, or right hand as it might be, uh, you you have a lot of options available to you. And I would say that you probably have ridded yourself of that anxiety of where do I go? Do I have the security of having shelter, a roof over my head? Let's look then at the at the original premises, the, the the five questions then. True or false? A large down payment saves you more money over time than a small down payment. We've dispelled that. If we're smart about all of these things and we handle our money the way that we that we can, and somebody's going to say, "Yeah, but well, can you really earn that kind of rate? And is it really tax free?" And the answers are yes and yes. Okay, a 15-year mortgage will not save you more money over time than a 30-year mortgage you'll actually, that opportunity cost is real cost, whether you recognize it, whether you choose to recognize it or not. Making extra principal payments does not save you money, again, for the same reason, the opportunity cost. The interest rates, the main factor in determining the cost of a mortgage, I hope if you got nothing else out of this, you certainly saw that the amount of time, the term is the determining factor in terms of opportunity cost, all things considered uh, in, in the mortgage, it's better to leverage. So quit looking at this as, as debt. Even if you paid off the mortgage, don't you still have the expenses of repairs? Don't you still have the taxes to pay the state for the privilege of letting the state, allowing you to continue in the real estate? There are always, always a, a real estate is a cash sink uh, and it takes gymnastics to get money out of it. So you are not really more financially secure having your house paid off than financed 100%. You're just not. It's a money It's a money twist and you need to stop looking at a mortgage as debt and start looking at it as leverage that allows you to accomplish other goals that you may have. If this is interesting to you, if you want to see how we can apply these techniques and these goals in your own situation, for your own family, your own life, and see that you can have the retirement that you so richly deserve because you've earned it or that you are anticipating to have because you need to take the actions and make the decisions right now to position yourself so that you're at that point by the time you get there between now and that future, contact me. All right, take advantage of this free offer. It truly is an $1,800 value. Uh, services that I pay uh, that, that existing clients, uh, you know, we, we do this routinely with them. But if you're new and want to come on board, take advantage of that. It's a limited, it's a limited time offer and it's, 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 it's totally, it's complimentary. I look forward to meeting with you. Touch base with you soon. See you again soon on another topic.